Okay, this is exercise uh, 14C and we're on uh, question, question 5, okay? So, a distance radius 2 meters has a circular hole of radius 1 meters removed from its center from an annulus of mass m. Show that the moment of inertia about the annulus, about an axis to its center perpendicular to its plane is 502m. Okay. So, what we're going to do first and foremost is we might actually just go over a proof. I haven't done a proof in a while. Oh, we don't actually have to do the proof. It's actually this annulus is set to roll from rest down the slope. Okay. So, what we're doing here is right, we got our annulus. That's a rectangle, obviously. Uh, there's the first one, there's the second one. So that's our annulus there, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set the big, big R is going to be 2. So, okay, so we're going to set the big radius at 2, which is what it is. Big R equals 2, and small r equals 1. So, okay, okay, so that's what we're looking at here. John is set to roll from rest down the slope. Okay, so it's going to roll down the slope. So we'll just put it on an actual slope. Yeah, it's actually going down. Uh, it's not actually a wedge. It's uh, keyword is uh, set rest down a slope inclined. If it says wedge, the slope is movable. If it doesn't say wedge, if it says plane, or it doesn't specify that it's a wedge, it's not movable. So in this case, obviously the slope isn't moving. Okay. So now that we have that done, what we're going to do next is going to figure out uh, our components of uh, components of weight. Okay, so we'll do that in a uh, do it in just one here. Okay, so we'll uh, put it in red. Okay, so our weight is going directly down. So directly down into the into the. Uh, this is the plane. We have to resolve perpendicular and parallel, as shown. Now our angle is uh, 45 degrees, which in turn makes this angle 45 degrees. Now that's going to be uh, it's of weight m, okay? So it's mg all the way down, which means mg sine 45, which is going to be mg over root 2. And then the other one's also going to be mg over root 2. So that's down and to the left. Okay, find the linear acceleration of the annulus. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find out the linear acceleration of the annulus. Okay, the formula we always use is gain in Ke equals loss in Pe. Gain in kinetic energy equals loss in potential energy. Okay. And what we're going to do here is uh, we have to figure out there's a length uh, s, okay? And if you're to look at the length s, s is how how far it's going to actually roll down roll down the hill, okay? So that's s there. But what we need to find out about s is we need to convert s into h. So if you imagine s being the hypotenuse and this being 45, okay? This being h. Then we know that sine 45 equals uh, h over s. This means h is s over root 2. s sine 45 is s over root 2. So just remember that. Okay. Next thing, gain in kinetic energy equals loss in potential energy. So we're going to do is a half mv squared uh, plus a half its uh, rotational energy is going to be a half inertia uh, omega squared which is angular velocity squared equals loss in PE which is mgh okay let's convert them over so we're going to have a half mv squared 
plus uh, a half. Now, what does it say? The inertia is five over two m. Yeah, inertia is five over two m. Change omega. Omega is v over r. This makes omega squared v squared over r squared. It says you have to show that the inertia is five over two m. Uh. This is perfect. It's five over two m. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, to show that's five over two m. So let's jump in here with this. Okay. Uh, the last question was. Uh, it's a general proof that you've already done okay and what it would be is uh, if you we did question 8 the other day okay and question 8 means it's a half capital R squared plus small r squared so if you just do a half 2 squared plus 1 squared you get your 5 over 2 there that's what they did in part 1 okay uh, I'd be inclined to think that you have to show the full proof that we did in 14a and 14b. It's nothing new to us, we've done them already. So if you're wondering about it, go to 14a and 14b, okay? Alright guys, now that that's done, we're going to uh, gonna head back to the uh, main part of the question, okay? Now the main part of the question is, uh, this here equals uh, mg we're going to change h into s over root 2. Now we're going to multiply this out. Uh, I also forgot one little part there. The part I forgot was, I forgot to put in the uh, omega squared, which is v squared over r squared. Okay. Now let's multiply this out. We're going to get half mv squared plus 5 over 4 no what's that going to be? 5 over 4 the r squared usually cancels I'm trying to see where the r squared is coming from it's 2 isn't it? sorry? 2 oh r is 2 so omega squared is v squared over r squared which is v squared over Four. Okay, so technically I can change this to a. Uh, it's actually big R squared because uh, the reason why it's big R squared is uh, you're talking about you're talking about the angular angular uh, you're talking about an angular on the end you're talking about the angular moment velocity at the end of the object. Okay, it's the end of the object that's in contact with the plane. Not the set, not the central radius. Okay, so that's why you got to keep that in mind when you're doing it. So we're going to five over four m times v squared over four equals mgs all over root two. Now we can just change the denominator there. You can see the two fours. That'll change that into sixteen. Okay, so it's going to be five mv squared over sixteen. Okay. Now that this is done, what we're going to be doing next is uh, we got to uh, get V on its own. The reason why we get V on its own is we want to then get A on its own using V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, okay? So what we're going to do is, uh, I suppose, add a half to 5 over 16. Gives me 13 over 16 MV squared equals mgs divided by root 2 cancel the m's uh, then yeah okay so what we're going to do next is cross multiply and we're going to get v squared equals 16 gs over 13 root 2 okay and 13 root 2 and we'll just leave it as v squared. Now the reason, can anybody tell me why I should leave it as v squared? Because to find a, remember these questions, step one, find b. Step two, find a. And the equation we always tend to be using is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. That's why it's a good idea just to leave it in terms of v squared, okay? 
So we're going to get 16 GS over 30 in root 2 equals u squared, which is 0, because it starts off from refs. And then 2AS is going to be 2A times S. DS is cancelled both sides. And A, therefore, is going to equal, to bring the 2 underneath. 2 into 16 goes 8 times, so it's going to be 8G over 13 root 2. Uh, remember your units, meters per second squared. Okay, so look, that's our, uh, that is our, what's it called, uh, our acceleration, okay? What's the next part of the question looking for? Let me tell me. Coefficient of friction, it was just about to go to, it was, show that the u mu is the coefficient of friction between annulus and slope. Then mu has to be greater than or equal to 5 over 13. Okay. Now, uh, friction opposes acceleration, yeah? Now, so it means that if we have too low a friction, what would happen? Our acceleration wouldn't be this anymore, it'd be something greater. So maybe it's just sort of trying to cap off the acceleration, okay? So to go about doing this, okay, you're talking about friction, you're talking about a force. So remember that friction equals mu times r or mu n, the reaction force. So that means to get this sorted, we need to look into a force equation, okay? Now, F equals MA, okay, and MA will equal weight minus friction. Now, remember that our acceleration is going down the slope, weight is going down the slope, friction opposes the motion going up the slope. That's why we set it up like that. MA is going to be m times, uh, I'm just going to put an m in here. So this is basically 8mg eight, eight 13 over root 2, okay? 8mg 13 divided by root 2. Okay, its weight is the component going uh, down the hill. So if we go back to the top, its weight is mg over root 2. And friction. We have to find the reaction force, so if we go back up to our triangle, the reaction force is the one that goes, technically speaking, it's going, it's going up through, it's the one that's supporting the, uh, the annulus, and it's in direct, it's directly opposed to weight perpendicular to the plane. So it's mg over root 2 as well, so it's going to be mu mg root 2, mg over root 2. So mu, mu, r, R is mg over root 2. So what's that going to be? Mu mg over root 2. Lucky for us, the root 2's cancel both sides. The m's will cancel. And we're going to bring this, uh, sorry, I'll just tidy this up for a second. hg over 13 equals g minus mu g. Okay? I think we can figure it out from there, can't we? 5g over 13. Oh, yeah. So, 1 minus mu equals 8 over 13. Uh, mu, therefore, is 5 over 13. Okay. So, when the annulus is on the point of slipping, okay, your force is weight minus friction. Okay? Now, what happens if uh, what happens if friction is a bigger number than sorry, friction is trying to think now. The question states show that mu is the coefficient of friction between the annulus and the slope. Uh, I don't <sighs> show that mu is the coefficient of friction between the annulus and slope that mu is greater than or equal to 5 over 13 okay 
So where does that have proven that mu equals 5 over 13? We didn't prove it's greater than equal to 5 over 13, okay? So what it says here is, this is the least value of mu that will prevent uh, slipping. So what does it mean by slipping? So? The whole <coughs> disc is kind of going down, so it's a roll. Yeah, it's a roll, okay. Actually, 